Erev Tov, Chavri I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Tensions are mounting in the Middle East there, and things are not looking very good. The Sputnik News is reporting that, uh, the, that Turkey has been blocking ships from going through its strait there. Uh, the title of the article, Not Thinking Straight, Turkey Won't Let Russian Ships Into uh, Bosphorus. Uh, dozens of Russian ships have reportedly been waiting for hours near the Bosphorus Strait to get the go-ahead from Turkey to be able to pass through the waterway. Uh, no, we don't know anything as of yet as far as warships or naval ships that Russia has. Uh, but clearly they have been blocking now for hours the different cargo ships of Russia in a clear violation of international norms. Turkish authorities have created hurdles for Russian vessels passing through the Bosphorus uh, Strait. As a result, dozens of Russian ships have been waiting for hours to obtain the green light from Turkey uh, for passage, uh, according to media reports said. The RIA Novosti quoted Viktor uh, Kravkinoko, former chief of staff of Russian Navy is saying that a possible unilateral closure by Turkey of the Bosphorus Strait for Russian ships would be out of line with international law. The Turkey will not close the strait to Russian vessels en route to Syria because it would be a violation of international law and the Montrex Convention in particular, a document that was signed by most countries at that time during this particular siege there. Uh, it, is, it is very... Uh, a touchy situation as of right now. Uh, no doubt we can understand why Turkey is probably doing this. They have downed the Russian bomber, the Su-24. Russia is preparing, uh, no doubt, for a ground war in Syria. We also have uh, news being reported on the Express. The Home Daily Sunday Express news report there says that uh, Russia is sending 150,000 soldiers to Syria to wipe out the evil Islamic State. Now, my concern is, is if this is really going to happen, that it's not Russia sending 150,000 troops to deal with Syria, but yet Russia is preparing for the fight that they're going to do with Turkey, which really is the ISIS force. They're the ones that are arming ISIS. Uh, and according to this article here, it says Vladimir Putin is preparing to send 150,000 troops to Syria in a bid to wipe out the evil Islamic State once and for all, as he hints at joining the West following the Paris attacks. We'll be joining the West, and I can tell you why in just a moment. The Russian leader is reportedly mounting an enormous military mission to take control of the terror group's stronghold, Raqqa. The city is self-declared capital of ISIS in Syria and patrolled by as many as 5,000 jihadist members. Putin is set to, uh, to mobilize 150,000 reservists who he conscripted into the military in September. Yesterday, following the Paris attacks, Putin hinted he was ready to join forces with the West to tackle the Islamic State. He told David Cameron the recent uh, tragic events in France show that he should join efforts in preventing terror. But in the, in the wake of that, we also find that Berlin will not share information with Russia. Berlin won't share ISIS intelligent data with Russia, but will coordinate flights uh, uh, says the minister. Germany is, uh, says here that Germany, which is going to take part in the mission against the Islamic State terrorist group outlawed uh, in Russia, in Syria, and Iraq, will not provide data obtained by reconnaissance aircraft to Russia. German Defense Minister Ursula, uh, uh, Ursula von der Leyen told the uh, N24 German TV channel on Tuesday, the photos and data that we obtain remain exclusively in our coalition. They will not be provided to Russia, she said. Uh, very serious situation there. And as I said, if Russia is putting together 150,000 troops to send into Syria, quote unquote, to take out ISIS, well, guess what the United States is about to do? You got it right. They are sending in troops as well. Uh, according to this here, U.S. deploys forces to bo uh, boost fight against ISIS poised to carry out unilateral ops in Syria. Uh, now, this is very alarming here because it's the expeditionary targeting force to help Iraq put uh, additional pressure on the Islamic State. Defense Secretary Ash Carter said the special forces will be poised to conduct unilateral operations into, into Syria. Uh, these special operations will over time be able to conduct raids, free hostages, gather intelligence, and rapture, uh, excuse me, capture ISIL leaders. Carter told the House of Armed Service Committee in prepared remarks using abbreviation for the Islamic State. 
uh, that creates a victorious cycle of better intelligence, which generates more targets, more raids, more mo momentum, he added. Um, there are currently about 3,400 American troops in Iraq. In November, the U.S. announced that 50 commandos will be sent into northern Syria uh, to advise anti-ISIS forces there. The Pentagon would not comment on whether those special operation troops had already arrived in the battlefield of the country. Over time, the 50 forces will conduct raids in both Iraq and Syria to put even more pressure on uh, uh, ISIS, Carter told the committee. Unilateral raids, uh, which would not be sanctioned by the Syrian President Bashar Assad, would represent split from a President Barack Obama commitment to avoid ground troops in the fight against ISIS. Two-thirds of Americans believe that Obama doesn't have the coherent strategy for combating ISIS, according to a mid-November poll, and about half of the respondents approved of sending ground troops to fight the terrorist group, and 63% said that such a deployment was inevitable. Only 20% believe that airstrikes, the current weapon of choice for the U.S. is dealing with the Islamic State, will be successful in eliminating the group. Uh, it is clear the United States is now justifying their campaign to send in troops on the ground. As we've said from the start of this, since the Paris attack, which we do believe has been coordinated, uh, not just with ISIS there, but those that actually created ISIS, those that have funded ISIS, those that have actually helped them build their huge military campaign there, uh, they're the ones that were in behind in, in creating the Paris attack. Uh, to justify ground troops in uh, Syria. That gives NATO a full reason to be able to bring their own troops in, and it's not to deal with ISIS. What their concern is is that Russia is getting a strong upper hand in this region, and they want to put a stop to it. Now we're seeing that also that, that, that uh, we're finding that uh, a new front for Russia to have to deal with is being created, created in Ukraine. There's been many, many tanks that have been sent to the Donsk region and other regions. Another yet article has come out on TASS that 25 tanks have been sent to another section there in the eastern Ukraine. They are definitely doing this as a distraction. The U.S. has no doubt encouraged NATO and their partners have encouraged the Ukraine to go and attack the eastern Ukraine people, hopefully, hopefully to distract Russia in another area. They have also attacked the the infrastructure of uh, Crimea to knock out the power. Again, another front would be a second front for Russia as well as the third front in Syria. Uh, and now on yet a fourth front, and that's the blockade of the strait. They're going through Turkey there. Uh, uh, and, and it is clearly going to become a place where if Russia wants to get warships through there, they're going to have to fight their way through there. Uh, it's evident that the NATO and their allies are making sure that Russia cannot gain any headway in this area and that they're trying to immediately cut off the supply line and the routes that Russia would take in order to be able to back or to rearm any, any of their, their manpower there. Russia no doubt will end up having to work with Iran in doing this. Uh, because Turkey certainly is not going to be a partner for them. And if Iran gets involved in this, which Iran already has special forces on the ground in Damascus there, uh, it's going to turn into a major uh, catastrophe before too long. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom and good evening.